Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a new edition of your weekday program, The Daily Debate, here on Nile TV International. I'm your host for tonight, Nancy Sarah Barakat. Up for discussion, we're going to be taking a look at some of the most recent developments that have taken place in Turkey. As I'm sure you all have all heard, the country has recently witnessed an unfortunate attack on its airport in Istanbul, an attack that has claimed the lives of over 40 people. So far, Turkey has named two of the three suicide bombers who struck Istanbul's International Airport on Tuesday night. According to the Turkish Prime Minister's office, the three attackers were from Russia, Kyrgyzstan and Uzbekistan. At least 230 others were wounded as a result of the attack, with 80 people still hospitalized and believed to be in critical condition. On another front, Turkey went on a major diplomatic charm offensive, seeking to restore ties with both Russia and Israel, as it moves back towards a policy known as zero problems with neighbors. The foreign policy shift comes after Turkey betrayed embroiled in a series of diplomatic crises in recent months and with its foe Bashar al-Assad still in power in Syria. The Kremlin confirmed on Monday that Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has apologized to Russian President Vladimir Putin for the downing of a Russian jet by Turkey's military. Following Turkey's shootdown of the Russian Su-24 warplane over its border with Syria last November, Russia imposed a number of economic sanctions on Turkey, stopped exporting natural gas to the country, ended visa-free travel, and banned Russian citizens from taking package holidays to Turkey all efforts aimed at punishing Turkey for its action. Israel, on the other hand, and Turkey also reached a deal aimed at ending years of a criminy and restoring normalized ties that were soured after a deadly 2010 raid on an aid flotilla. All this is to be discussed later on tonight with my guest, Dr. Huda Raghib, Professor of Political Science and member of the Egyptian Council for Foreign Affairs. Thank you very much for coming in tonight. Also, I have the pleasure of being joined by Dr. Kamel Abouakil, Chief of the, of the European Affairs Committee at the Egyptian Council for Foreign Affairs. Thank you Thank very you. much for coming Thank in. Gents, uh, my dear guest, if you'll allow me, ladies and gentlemen as well, to take a quick break before we start tonight's discussion and the latest developments with regard to the attack on Turkey's international airport and then we'll be back to discuss that. The death of a Jordanian child brought the toll from this week's Istanbul airport attack to 45 as a scare sparked fresh jitters in Turkey's biggest city. Ankara has pointed blame at Daesh terrorist group for Tuesday's gun and suicide bomb rampage at Atatürk International Airport. Four-year-old Jordanian national Riyam Mohammed, one of more than 200 people injured in the attack, had died in hospital. The Istanbul governor's office said that 52 people were still in hospital, including 20 in intensive care. The child's death came as a man sparked chaos by shouting suicide bomber in a crowded Istanbul market on Saturday, with the city still reeling from the attacks. One woman was slightly injured in the panic in Yomarani, a working-class neighborhood on Istanbul's Asian side. Police were called to the scene. The airport carnage was the latest in a string of deadly attacks to hit Turkey in the past year, blamed on either Daesh terrorists or Kurdish rebels. There has been no claim of responsibility, but officials and analysts say the evidence points to Daesh strike. Istanbul police have arrested 24 people in connection with the attack, including 15 foreigners. Authorities have said that they believe the three attackers were Russian and Uzbek and Kyrgyz nationals. Media named two of them on Friday as Rakim Bulgarov and Vadim Usamanov without giving their nationalities. Central Asia former Soviet republics have been a major source of foreign insurgents traveling to fight with Daesh and other extremist groups in Iraq and Syria. Turkish media have identified a Chechen Ahmad Shatayev as the mastermind of the attack describing him as the head of a Daesh cell in Istanbul. He is accused of planning two bombings in the city earlier this year in the Sultan Ahmad Tourist District and the Istiklal shopping street, 
both of which killed foreigners. The tactic used in the airport attack shooting and then detonating explosives is called Inimazi and is being used more frequently by terrorists. President Recep Tayyip Erdogan condemned the attacks in remarks Friday at the opening of a new mosque in Istanbul. The Turkish government continued to stress on Friday that Turkey's struggle with the Kurdistan Workers' Party, an outlawed militia that has attacked Turkish security forces and civilian targets, was as important as its battle with Daesh. and gentlemen. Ladies first, Dr. Huda, uh, let me start off by asking you, what do you think led up to the Istanbul attacks? Well, you have to know that this is the third attack in this year, 2016. Mm. And this third attack, uh, and uh, the, despite the claims of, uh, of, of, of the Turkish government that they are very much, all airports are very much secured and secured measures, yet this happened. And it's not only bombings, but also gunfire. So you can tell that where are these security measures and uh, what's really taking place. I mean, who is, and they, they claim it on ISIS. And by the way, up till this moment, I believe, I don't know if you have any mm. uh, further updates, that uh, no, I mean, neither ISIS nor even Kurdistan, the Kurdistani pact or mm. the PKK, which is the workers, the Turkish, um, uh, sorry, the Kurdish um, yeah. workers, party. workers party claimed any responsibility. So, but they are, the, the government, the Turkish government is claiming that ISIS is behind or the Islamic State is behind uh, this particular attack right. I mean, uh, in this regard. Uh, th this is one thing, this is as what happened. But, uh, I think now it's, um, there are more that to this than, well, there is the Kurds in, in, in in the Kurdistan, let me right. put it as a Kurdistan pact, and they have this southeast part, the southern part, where they have their dominance, I mean, very much close to the Syrian borders, and this is one thing, and of course, there are a lot of rebels, I mean, Kurdish uh, rebels, and you know how fearful the, 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 the military, the Turkish military, is really going against them and trying to suppress them and get rid of them. This is one thing. Um, and as you have just said, that they already caught an Aus Pakistani and uh, uh, what are, someone from Kurdistan. From the Kurdistan from and, and from Russia. And this is something we're going to speak about, of course, right. the Russian right. uh, uh, sanctions or relations with Turkey. So, uh, but up till this moment, it's really not clear, unclear, who is responsible for this. But mm -hmm. what we are in now, and it's in your report, you said that Turkey wants to go back to the square of zero mm -hmm. problem. And I think this is need to be analyzed and discussed. Right. Well, if mm -hmm. I come back to you, or I come to you, mm -hmm. Dr. Kamel, and to mm -hmm. ask you the same question, what do you think has led up? to the series of attacks, perhaps culminating in the death now, the biggest attack, 45 people mm -hmm. dead and more than 80 injured. Well, as my colleague Dr. Hoda said, uh, this is not the first uh, incident of its kind. And uh, it is a culmination of several incidents that happened before, and several policy that Turkey has acquired. Before that, particularly under the auspices of the former uh, foreign minister, uh, uh, Ahmed Dawood Oglu. Dawood. Now we have a change of guard, so to speak. We have uh, Jawish Oglu, Maulud Jawish Oglu as a uh, foreign minister and Yildirim as a prime minister. And they have made 180 degrees in the policy of, uh, of Turkey. Uh, in that, uh, like Dr. Hodes said, uh, they want to reduce the friction that uh, the previous uh, Turkish policy has created between Turkey and other Neighbors. members in the mm -hmm. Middle East. And they started with the uh, solving the problem between Russia and uh, Turkey, as well as between Israel and uh, Turkey. Uh, why is Turkey uh, the target of mm -hmm. all these terrorist attacks? Well, if it depends on who is behind it. Right. The fact that the Uzbek people are behind it or some uh, extremist elements, maybe from Chechnya mm. and uh, related uh, 
uh, regions uh, in in Russia would probably would probably indicate one of the reasons for the rapprochement between Turkey and and uh, and uh, Russia or between Erdogan personally and uh, Putin and uh, <clears throat> so that is one one issue here but there are certain things that happen behind the scenes that you and I and nobody knows mm -hmm. what's behind this uh, it all comes in the clear after the investigation is complete but if they come to the real people behind these uh, attacks but uh, I uh, like to uh, think that uh, the, the zero uh, problem which was declared when uh, Ahmed Dawood Oglu became uh, uh, Prime Minister uh, has not succeeded because Turkey had uh, all these problems with everybody. But now it seems that they do have a good shot at the zero problem. They have excellent relations with Iran. Mm. Now, um, yesterday I think uh, Netanyahu said, you know, six years now there has been no relationship mm. between Israel okay. and uh, and Turkey after the Marmara incident mm -hmm. and the death of the mm -hmm. ten Turkish uh, volunteers. Netanyahu uh, yesterday made a statement. I don't know if a lot of people paid close attention to it or not. Mm -hmm. He said that Turkey is more important to Israel than Greece. Mm. when it comes to the development of the gas fields in the eastern Mediterranean, which is of vital importance to, uh, and uh, not only for the development of the fields themselves, but also the development of pipelines to carry that gas into, into Europe. And he, I was surprised to see this, but you know, it started, the whole thing started apparently with a bureaucratic slight Mm. If you want to say, if you, because because the there was an insult made to the Turkish ambassador by the deputy minister of state of Israel when he summoned him, huh? and he told him, you know, I am high here and you are down here. Mm. That slight from a from a bureaucrat uh, started the bad blood between Israel, and then came the Marmara thing. Mm. What? I find very interesting is that Erdogan actually accepted an apology from Netanyahu and accepted compensation for the uh, yes. for the yeah. uh, dead uh, mm. uh, Turks, but he insisted that the siege around Gaza will not be broken. Mm. He sort of made it milder by saying that we are going to continue to supply Gaza with humanitarian supplies and with medicine and food and cement and building material and so on, but through Israeli ports. Right. So uh, how, how, how did you analyze that particular statement? Which statement? The, the fact, statement? No, Erdogan's statement Erdogan, now, as you this say. This is uh, what I call real politique. Right. The man is a, uh, a practical politician. I mean, he. That shows that he is uh, good in maneuvering, uh, and not uh, an ideologist or uh, stuck in his mm -hmm. ways. He can be flexible. Right. If we go back to the attack, before we start touching on the, the, the new uh, policies or the policies uh, with Russia and Israel, um, and I come back to you, Dr. Huda, and I ask you, is this a clear security lapse, one? And on the other hand, also, if Daesh is the main body behind uh, this particular attack on Turkish soil, does it mean that the group has um, a strong footing on Turkish soil? And given the fact that also um, we've got uh, conspiracy theorists who believe that Turkey is the main sponsor of Daesh, or one of the main sponsors of Daesh, do you think it has backfired on Turkey? Mm. No, I, 
Well, let me go with like ABC okay. of what you have just said and about security loops and or loopholes. I would say yes, of course. And you cannot be 100%, you know, can guarantee this kind of security because you cannot guarantee your people. I mean, how loyal the loyalties of the Turkish people, particularly they said that there is the Kurdish um, side here and there are rebels as well. So it's still penetrating the country and you cannot really stop and uh, Turkey is not really wise enough to deal with the Turkish or sorry with the Kurdish or the Kurdistani and this is one thing that really Turkey is asked to put an end to that or try to make a reconciliation this is on the about security measures if you cannot be 100% certain about that mm -hmm. there are infl infiltration definitely as for the ISIS here and that Turkey is in the first place was the one that really backed or supported the uh, ISIS and um, well were provided them with with, with uh, a lot of provisions I mean including of course weapons and other things I guess yes it's, it's a backfire if it's a backfire it could be it could be one thing a backfire or it could be a message again that well the Islamic State is strong enough and, and it, it, it has its domination, particularly in the surrounding of Syria. This is one of my, this is my explanation that mm. I wanted to show that if, if ISIS has been clear to be the main responsible for what happened, as I said, at, up till this moment, no one party have really claimed any responsibility. No. I'm not, so you cannot really be right. certain about that but what i'm certain about is that there are some russian interests not to let turkey be in close enough to the syrian inside syria right and this is the main thing here is yes shunt away get away from syria and you have no hold in there particularly with the rebels mm. and um, I think all these kind of incidents, this incidents, all this is maybe Russia is not responsible direct, definitely it's not responsible, but it helps that really we don't want Turkey to be in, we want Turkey to be out of the scene. Mm particularly about what happened after what happened to the downing of this aircraft, uh, Russian aircraft, that right. you have, um, you have a uh, Turkey must really be step away or st have a step, a step away from being involved in, in Syria and with the Bashar al-Assad because it's backed by Russia. And I will continue with that because about the Russian relationship. And just one comment uh, for you, sir, Dr. Okhil, is that actually Turkey depends on Russia for importing of gas. I mean, of course, heavily dependent on Russia, and Russia understands that. And it's the idea... I'm going to have to cut you off, mm. ladies and gentlemen. We're going to go live now to the Cairo Opera House, where President Abdel Fattah Sisi is there attending celebrations. Let's take a look and go live.